What's up guys, it's Casual FM here, back with another video, except today we have got something special. Obviously there's a lot of talk around Cristiano Ronaldo's contract, it's rumoured that on FM he's being paid £1 million a week by Juventus. How realistic is this? We do not know, but it is probably more than 500000 This man is making a killing, and why not when he is the best player in the world right now, arguably to Messi or, you know, anybody else. But anyway, that's not a point. This guy keeps in great physical shape for his age and he is a great player. So the question is, his contract is maybe going to be terminated. And there are very, very different places he could go. But on the grapevine, Phil Neville, Gary Neville, Paul Scholes, Ryan Giggs, have put all of their money together from their Man United era and have signed him for Salford. Now, guys, we're going to see in this episode here, what can Ronaldo do to Salford? Salford, obviously, are in the Sky Bet League 2 when you start the game in the 22-21 season. Now, the question is, is he good enough to take them up? Now, I am pretty sure at the point of speaking, they are 7th or 8th in the league and not actually in the playoff places at this time. So, we're talking January. Uh, but they are a very competitive team and they do have a decent sized budget for that league. So, realistically, they are predicted to come third anyway. So, they should be in the playoffs. But does Ronaldo get them up is the question that we are going to look at today. Obviously, I can't spell Salford. So, if we have a look, and we go to... So, I mean, immediately we can already see. It's very, very annoying. So... Let's go to uh, right. boom. Right then, guys. Well, as we are looking, they won. Uh, did they win by you know great fall? No. They wouldn't buy five points over their nearest team, Colchester. Now, Colchester looked like they were... Oh, this is so, so annoying. Can I not... Well, I'm unaware of how to check that, so that's very annoying. From looking at it anyway, Colchester looked like they were a decent team. Because they only lost 13 and they won 24. And they played, oh no, sorry, they lost 9. So they actually lost 1 less than Salford themselves. From looking at it, though, Colchester and Salford did run away with the league. There was a big difference between the teams that got promoted. Uh, but if we also have a look, I believe Leighton Oregon went up with Salford. And they have been relegated again. Obviously, they're having their own problems at the moment. But if we look at the league, Forest Green are obviously another team that are favoured to be in the like positions to go off. Bolton, I know, are struggling financially, but they are also a very big team to be in this league. And these are teams that have come mid-table, lower mid-table, and you would expect to see them higher. Obviously, Salford have won the league, but they've not done it in the best form. They've, they've lost, and they lost to Leighton Orient as well. 2-1, which is a bit a bit embarrassing. And if I'm reading this right, they got thrashed by Tranmere. And they got beat by Cambridge. Colchester beat... They've lost to Leighton Orient twice, if I'm honest, by the looks of it. Uh, if we have a look at the stats... Um, I don't know if this is going to be able to show me for that year... Oh, well, we can just do this, and if we click on, so if we have a look, he played 42 games 
in that season. And he scored 29 goals with 9 assists and 14 player of the matches. Now overall, he played 48 games that season. He played and scored 38 goals, 12 assists, 17 player of the matches. But it looks like he's only had one penalty. He has a great rating, as he always does. He is a great player. What I do struggle to believe is that he played. He apparently still played 11 international games, but only scored four goals, which is a bit weird because you would expect him to score more. I did expect him to score more, to be fair, in this league uh, with the games, because if you see here, he's played 33, scored 31. 31 21 you know he's quite a consistent scorer but i don't know it's a bit weird isn't it you would expect to see more um if we have a look at the the tactics and where they're playing him they are actually playing him he's played 28 times on the left four times on the right for this season and three times up front and he's obviously, he scored more, oh no, this is for this season at the moment. So he scored more from being on that side, from on the left side, than he has from any other side. Um, let's have a little look. I mean, he obviously won that, so he won the promotion. He was named the Skybet team, uh, the artist for this year. Uh, uh, let's have a look here quickly to see if he he was named in the Portuguese base of 11 obviously that's not from his South of time. he was named supporters player of the year named in South of seasonal best 11 he was sky bet two league player of the year, Sky Bet top goal scorer, so he did get the golden boot, which is interesting with his 29 goals. Only four more, though, than the year before with Edon Doyle that scored. And if we have a look here, he, OK, he did get nine more goals than the person next. Um, what else have we got? What else has he done? He also won the player select. So he has had a very... Very decent spell. Um, so he's resigned as the Portugal captain. Not sure why. He broke the Salford record for goals scored in a season with 34. And he has been appointed as the vice captain. Not sure why he's not the, uh, the captain, if I'm honest. If we have a look, I can't see, to my knowledge, any... Any stats that have declined. I think his finishing might have been 19. But I, I feel like it would have an arrow. But he still looks good. He's 36. And he looks like he's in his prime. He's played overall at the moment now. 74 games for Salford. And he's scored 47 goals. He's tearing it up. He looks amazing, doesn't he? Now... Realistically, he's lost 0.6 million of a value, but he is currently playing for um, a League One team now, isn't he? So I would expect that. He is own. He has managed to sign himself a new contract, but I did say it that Juventus would pay 100k of his wage, so he didn't lose too much money from being down here because I did feel bad for him. And he does have a six-year and nine-month contract. Whether or not he makes it to the end of that is questionable. But at the moment, I can't see any. He has no plans for the future, and it looks like he's still going to be playing information wise. He doesn't really. Nothing's really changed. He's not. He doesn't say he's unhappy. He's not, got no plans. Um, I mean, it's a weird one, isn't it? You know, I, I'd expect them to play him up front, but they're playing him to the. To the left, and yeah, okay, that's his favoured position, but it's Ronaldo, you'd play him up front, wouldn't you? But interestingly, let's have a look at who they've got 
because obviously their key player is Ronaldo, their vice captain is Ronaldo. Who's their captain? This this guy here is the captain, guys, over Ronaldo. Imagine that. And Simon Grayson, well, he's having the time of his life. He left Blackpool, he's Salford manager, and look at him now. He's he's going to be the best manager in the world with this team, and he's getting to manage Ronaldo. I'm very, very, very jealous. He's almost got the most assists, because if you remember, I think he's on eight assists. So he's catching this guy here already, and he's got the most player of the matches. He's playing great. If we have a look at the players, though, let's have a look at the tactics. Jesus Christ, Ronaldo's not even in the team. How is this guy, Danny, Danny Shanani, keeping Ronaldo out? This, this is dreadful. Elliot, who we did see was the striker last year, now I've noticed, it's keeping him out. He's got two goals. Two goals in nine. You've got Ronaldo on the bench. You've got Piss and Ronaldo. Thomas Asante. One goal is... You've got Ronaldo. How are you not using Ronaldo when you have Ronaldo? This is frustration. Let's have a look at the transfers and see if they've brought anybody in this season. Charlie Cresswell. Oh, he's... This guy... I don't know if you've seen... Dr. Benji's uh, lead save. This guy will be a uh, very good... In the future, I don't know if it lists him as a wonder kid, um, but talented as the next Tony Adams, you know he's going to be the next non like non negotiable defender that just doesn't do anything wrong. Looking here, they've signed a lot of centre backs on loan, a lot of defenders even. Sorry, a lot of them actually, haven't they? They've got they've got a lot of defenders in this squad completely. Uh, this guy's already joining Palmer, so this guy must be of half decency, or unless Palmer's struggling at the moment. But yeah, no, they've signed a lot of players in the back, and they've let Jordan Turnbull go, who I don't know <laughs> if you know in real life. He's he used to play for Coventry, great player back in the day. He was, but he they've let him go to a rival team anyway, and they've let James Wilson go to Colchester. Who, well, let's have a look how they're doing. Oh, well, they're not doing as well. Okay. So if we just have a look anyway quickly to see how they're doing in February and then we'll, in the next video, we'll come back to see how they've done in two and three years. And then finally, if we can make him last that long, we'll have a look to see how they do in the uh, in the five years. There you go. So they are neck and neck with commentary. They've had four losses, which is less than they had in the last season. So they're playing well. But they've got a hell of a lot of draws. And then they connect with Portsmouth, sorry, so they could still go up. This could be the year that we see Salford back-to-back -back promotions. Right, guys, this has been Casual FM. And this is What If Ronaldo signed for Salford. Hopefully, we will see you again in the next video. And if you're liking these What Ifs, just view the video, please. I'll keep making these when I've got the time. Right, guys, thank you.